Okay class, today we're in section 5.5, solve absolute value equations. Section 5.5, solve absolute value equations. Before, you solved linear equations. Now you will solve absolute value equations. Key vocabulary, absolute value equation, absolute deviation, absolute value. The absolute value of a number A written the absolute value of A is the distance between A and 0 on a number line. An absolute value equation such as the absolute value of X is equal to 4 is an equation that contains an absolute value expression. The equation the absolute value of X is equal to 4 means that the distance between X and 0 is 4. The solutions of the equations are 4 and negative 4 because they are the only numbers whose distance from 0 is 4. Okay, so when they say units, when they say units, what they mean here is this. The absolute value of x is equal to 4. Once again, the absolute value of x is equal to 4. How many units is 4 from 0? So you would go 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, what other number is also 4 units from 0? It would be negative 4. So, it would be 1, 2, excuse me, 1, 2, 3, 4. Once again, 1, 2, 3, 4. Or count this way, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 units. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 units from 0. Example 1. Solve an absolute value equation. Solve the absolute value of x is equal to 7. Solution. The distance between x and 0 is 7. So, x is equal to 7 or x is equal to negative 7. Once again, the distance between x and 0 is 7. So, x is equal to 7 or x is equal to a negative 7. So, the solutions are 7 and negative 7. Alright, now for those of us who can see it visually, the absolute value of x is equal to 7. In other words, what number is it you can put in this symbol and the answer would be 7. Some of you already know the absolute value of 7 is 7 and you also know that the absolute value of a negative 7 is also 7. But looking at the graph, it would be a so. How many units is 7 from 0? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. What other number is also 7 units from 0? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That negative 7. So once again, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, number 7. Now how many spaces did you count? You just counted 7 units. Solve, solving absolute value equations. In example 1, notice that the expression inside the absolute value symbol equals 7 or the opposite of 7. This suggests the following rule for solving an absolute value equation. Key concept. Solve an absolute value equation. The equation, the absolute value of a times x plus b is equal to c, where c is greater than or equal to zero, is equivalent to the statement ax plus b is equal to c or ax plus b is equal to a negative c. In other words, there's a positive version and there's a negative version when dealing with absolute value. Example 2. Solve an absolute value equation. Solve the absolute value of x minus 3 is equal to 8. Solution. Rewrite the absolute value equation as two equations. Then solve each equation separately. So, write the original equation. Absolute value of x minus 3 is equal to 8. Rewrite as two equations. x minus 3 is equal to 8 or x minus 3 is equal to a negative 8. Add 3 to each side since so you're trying to solve for x. So here you're going to have a plus 3 and a plus 3. When a negative 3 plus 3 is going to go to 0 and then 8 plus that 3 is going to be 11. Here you're going to have x minus 3 is equal to a negative 8. Plus 3 plus 3. Negative 3 and a positive 3 that goes to 0. That's gone. A negative 8 plus 3 is equal to a negative 5. So, 
your answers are x is equal to 11 or x is equal to a negative 5. The solutions are 11 and negative 5. Rewriting equations. To solve an absolute value equation, you may first need to rewrite the equation in the form the absolute value of ax plus b is equal to c. Example 3. Rewrite an absolute value equation. Solve 3 times the absolute value of 2x minus 7 minus 5 is equal to 4. Solution. First, rewrite the equation in the form the absolute value of ax plus b is equal to c. Write the original equation. 3 times the absolute value of 2x minus 7 minus 5 is equal to 4. Alright, now so what we have to do is take this equation and put it in this form. So to put it in this form, that's like saying the only thing that should be left on this side is the absolute value. The only thing left on this side is the absolute value. So that means we've got to get rid of the 3 and the negative 5. And we do that by using the same steps that we use when we are working with solving an equation. However, be careful. You said it says three times. You cannot distribute that three inside the absolute value. You cannot distribute the three inside the absolute value. You have to divide, divide it out. But your first step is to add five to each side. So here you're going to say plus five, and there you're going to say plus five. A negative 5, when combined with a positive 5, that goes to 0, so that's gone. 4 plus 5 is 9. So now you have 3 times the absolute value of 2x minus 7 is equal to 9. Now you're going to divide each side by 3. So divide by 3 here and divide by 3 there. 3 divided by 3 goes to 1. So you're left with just the absolute value of 2x minus 7. And then 9 divided by 3 is 3. So now you have the absolute value of 2x minus 7 is equal to 3. Alright now for those of us who don't see those two steps once again you add 5 to both sides negative 5 with a positive 5 that cancels out so that 5 is now gone and then 4 plus 5 is 9. So now this is where you are now you recall I said do not distribute that 3 inside the absolute values so you're going to divide both sides by 3. Here and here. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so that is gone. So all you're left with is 2x minus 7. And then you have 9 divided by 3, which is 3. Alright, after doing so, now we have the correct form. Absolute value is by itself. We got the ax. We got the b. And we have the c. Alright, now, next, solve the absolute value equation. Write the absolute value equation. That's what we did here. Rewrite as two equations, as in the previous example. So now we got 2x minus 7 is equal to 3, or 2x minus 7 is equal to a negative 3. Alright, in each one of these, we want to solve for x. So this is a two-step equation. So we're going to say plus 7, plus 7. We know by now this is going to cancel. 3 plus 7 is 10. So we got 2x is equal to 10. Now we divide both sides by 2. Divide by 2 there. Divide by 2 there. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So we're left with just x. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So on this side we got x is equal to 5. Next, 2x minus 7 is equal to a negative 3. So we're going to say plus 7 here, plus 7 there. A negative 7 when combined with a positive 7, that is gone. We're left with just 2x. Here I got a positive 7. A negative 3 plus 7 is 4. So I have 2x is equal to 4. I want to get this x by itself. It says 2 times, so now I'm going to divide by 2. Divide by 2 here, divide by 2 there. 2x divided by 2 leaves me with just x. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I'm left with just x. And then 4 divided by 2 is 2. So the solutions are 5 and 2. No, no solutions. The absolute value of a number is never negative. So when an absolute value expression equals a negative number, there are no solutions. 
Example 4. Decide if an equation has no solutions. Solve the absolute value of 3x plus 5 plus 6 is equal to a negative 2 if possible. Write the original equation. Absolute value of 3x plus 5 plus 6 is equal to a negative 2. Alright, before we begin this, we have to put it in the correct form. That means the absolute value symbols should be left by themselves on the, on the left hand side. All right, so to do that, we must subtract 6 from each side. So here, we're going to say minus 6, minus 6. Now, a positive 6, when combined with a negative 6, that goes to 0. So all you're left with is the absolute value of 3x plus 5 on this side. A negative 2 plus a negative 6 is a negative 8. So now we have the absolute value of 3x plus 5 is equal to a negative 8. The absolute value of a number is never negative, so there are no solutions. Alright, now for some of you who may be confused, let's go over some of our basic definitions as to why it cannot be negative. Alright, now what's the absolute value of 5? That's a positive 5. What's the absolute value of a negative 5? That's a positive 5. That's because the question we're asking is how many units is this positive 5 from 0? It's 5. How many units is this negative 5 from 0? It's 5. Okay, now when you see this type of question, what's the absolute value of x is equal to 7? What they're saying is, what number in here will come out to be a positive 7 when you take its absolute value? And that would be what? That would be 7. Absolute value of 7 is 7. And the absolute value of what? Of a negative 7 is 7. Now here the answer would be no solution. The absolute value of x is equal to a negative 7 because what number can you put in here and take the absolute value and come out with a negative 7? If you put 7 in there, what's the absolute value of 7? That's going to be what? A positive 7. How many units from 0? What's the absolute value of a negative 7? That's still going to be a positive 7, not a negative 7. Therefore, the absolute value of a negative number is always no solution. Absolute deviation. The absolute deviation of a number x from a given value is the absolute value of the difference of x and the given value. Absolute deviation is equal to the absolute value of x minus the given value. Example 5. Use absolute deviation basketballs. Before the start of a professional basketball game, a basketball must be inflated to an air pressure of 8 pounds per square inch PSI with an absolute error of 0.5 PSI. Absolute error is the absolute deviation of a measured value from an accepted value. Find the minimum and maximum acceptable air pressures for the basketball. Solution let P be the air pressure in PSI of a basketball. Write a verbal model. Then write and solve an absolute value equation. Absolute error 0.5 is equal to the absolute value of measured air pressure P minus the accepted air pressure 8. So we have 0.5 is equal to the absolute value of P minus 8. Write that original equation. 0.5 is equal to the absolute value of P minus 8. Rewrite as two equations. So we can end up with 0.5 is equal to P minus 8. That's the positive version. Or a negative 0.5 is equal to P minus 8. That's the negative version. Okay. After writing this two equations, we're going to add 8 to each side. So we end up with positive 8 here and a positive 8 there. 0. 0.5 plus 8 is 8.5. A negative 8 when combined with a positive 8 that goes to 0. So you're left with P. So P is equal to 8.5. On the other side, you got a positive 8 and a positive 8. That goes to 0. A negative 5, a negative 0. 0.5 plus 8 is equal to 7.5. So the minimum and maximum acceptable pressures are 7.5 PSI and 8.5 PSI. 